Hey guys, this is Alex and Patrick uh, at you with another TFB TV top five. Today's top five is top five best SMGs. Um, SMGs are probably my favorite guns to shoot because they mm -hmm. have low recoil, ammunition is cheap, uh, easy to relatively keep on target. Cheap. Yeah, relatively cheap. And uh, they're just overall barrels of fun. They are, they are. So what we have are actually more than five because we included some honorable mentions. Um, more than five SMGs that uh, are close to our hearts. Yes, um, you know, we, we just couldn't shun the last two. We couldn't. We, we almost wanted to factor the, the last two in and pay them some lip service just because of uh, both how important they are and how fun they are. Yes. Um, so without any I further agree. ado, how about we kick it off with the uh, Thompson and we'll just do the Thompson and the MP40 together. Let you take the old MP40 there. Gladly. Okay. And uh, I guess I'm stuck with the Thompson. <coughs> I say that uh, kind of humorously, but uh, I do prefer the MP40 uh, to the Thompson from a purely fun factory point of view. But uh, the Thompson obviously is more uh, more of an iconic firearm, I think. It is. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I think this might be more iconic in America. That'll be more iconic, but I true, think this true. will be more iconic worldwide. Uh, that's very possible. I don't know, though. The Thompson has a, is a <coughs> iconic in its own right. They're both iconic guns. When I think of a machine gun, though, my mind immediately jumps to the image of a, the silhouette of a Thompson. Um, yeah. They're both very important. The Thompson, one of the first SMGs, along with the Bergman MP18, this employs some of the uh, elements of the Bergman, including the telescoping firing pin that uh, makes the gun just a, a joy to shoot. Um, like I said, it's a much more fun gun to shoot. This has a higher rate of fire, though. So if I came around a corner and I saw a bunch of bad guys, um, you know, trying to yes, take... Yes, but keeping that one on target isn't as easy as keeping this one on target. Well, I mean, you have to be somewhat manly to control the 45 ACP cartridge. You and, can't do it either. Shut up. <laughs> and uh, it is. it does have a, a steeper learning curve. The gun is... The stock is lower... And uh, it is. Uh, it, it does want to rise. It does want to rise a lot more than the uh, than the MP40. Uh, that's in part uh, I mean, the grade and the cartridge, of course. But yes. Uh, also, this gun's much heavier. Probably about two pounds heavier. Uh, at least. Yeah. Um, also, fold the stock on that and show them that the. Uh, this is something that I think that the MP40 has an advantage. Yeah. Now, some of the uh, the earlier Thompsons, not the M1s, not the military service ones, typically had a detachable stock, but a folding stock that retains the stock is always better. <laughs> Uh, than a stock that simply detaches. Yeah. So you do have a, uh, an advantage there and in weight and in uh, max amount of cartridge you can carry just because the... Uh, right. The now, weight. this is something else that, you know, I mean, it's just not as good looking of a gun, but, you know... You're talking the MP40 is not as good looking? No. No, it's definitely not a not an attractive firearm, but that doesn't matter. You know, we're no, not as long as it works. Yeah. As long as it works. Aesthetics come second to mostly everything in, in uh, military applications of firearms. Yeah. Um, but these are both fantastic guns, and rightfully, they were placed in the top five. Yes. And it's, it's great. We have one European design and uh, one American design. So, uh, yeah, and um, I mean, honestly, go, kind of going through them, um, you know, and just in terms of importance, these are kind of one and two. Yeah. Um, yeah uh, I'll say a, a draw mm, for first. Yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of crazy. I'm, here I am holding my American Thompson submachine gun in America, wearing a shirt with, like, an M1 Grand clip, but I'm also saying I prefer to shoot the MP40, so, you know, take, take that as you will. Uh, but they're both fun, they're both awesome, they're both good guns, and uh, they both rightfully earned a place in the top five SMGs. Yes. So, let's move on. Uh, Patrick, I believe this next one's actually one of your favorites. It is. Um, hand you the MP40 back real quick. Sure. It is. Uh, it's kind of an obscure gun, though, unfortunately. Unfortunately, um, it never really took off. It was adopted in service by the Mexican Marines, I believe. Um, also by some units in Turkey and whatnot, from, from what some viewers have actually emailed. Now, we have done a video on this gun and we the MP40. We I'll will go ahead and uh, you can pop, click the link that's popped up on the screen if you want to watch the MPL video, um, which was actually, I think, for our first uh, video. It was the, or no, it was our first uh, video that we shot for TFDB TV, period, I yeah, think. For, yeah, as a joint, as a team, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really cool gun, guys. The, just the handling characteristics are not, show them how the stock didn't even wobble. For, for being well, a, I mean, a wire for stock, a wire stock, it's... It's pretty bulletproof. Super, super tight. You can also um, use the front as a foregrip. I don't know if they intended to do that. I, I don't think that, that was intended. No. It can be done. It, it can I be. Mean, I, it, it. Wouldn't, it wouldn't be my choice. No. And um, uh, you, you'd think that the, the foregrip, or sorry, the uh, the front end of the gun would get very hot, but actually... After, no, it, it doesn't. doesn't at all. I, mean, I think that has a lot to do with it being 9mm. Yeah, and it's got what I would call a forward assist, and you think, well, why does an open bolt submachine gun have a forward assist? Well... 
I wouldn't say it's really a forward assist. I think it's in case a, a cartridge doesn't extract or gets stuck in the chamber. Uh, that way you can force the bolt closed and then pull the cartridge out. Yeah, and, and to engage that, uh, you kind of yeah, you bring you it back and you push it in. And, and yeah. So, but uh, all in all, uh, it's a great gun. I mean, it's light, it's handy. Um, I really think it should have got a lot more, uh, it, it should have had a lot more adopters than it did. Um, but I mean, even, even shouldering it, you know, the, the sight arrangement where you've got a gutter set up top and a peep sight below really is pretty outstanding. It was, it was one of the last, it was kind of the death rattle of the open bolt SMG. It was one of the last open bolt SMGs that gave it that concept of huzzah, you know? Right. Uh, because the MP5 took off and just killed that whole deal. Um, there's, I, there's not many out there today that... And, Nobody and, starts and says, you know what, I'm going to design an open bolt submachine gun from the ground up these days. No, no. It's, um, it's, it's kind, of a, kind of a dead concept at this point. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, it really it is kind of a treat. I think it's, you know, a, kind of a forgotten gun that really should have been um, a little more prevalent than it was. Yeah. Yeah, you know, if, had that gun come out about five years earlier, um, which I believe it came out in 63. Something like that. Somewhere around there. It, if it would have come out much farther before the MP5, it might have been more successful, but it was too close to the MP5, so so it wasn't. But uh, moving on down the line, we've got one that everyone will recognize. Yeah, well, That's going to be the Uzi. reach over there. No. It's going to be the Uzi 9mm. Of course, the Uzi was offered in other calibers as well, like 41, and uh, there's caliber conversions for all sorts of crazy things. But, um, you know, the Uzi's a fantastic submachine gun that fires from the open bolt. And I think everything up to this point, it, well, everything, everything up to uh, this Yeah, everything has fired from an open bolt up to this um, point. That was really one of the definitive moments of the of SMG evolution was going from open to closed bolt. Mm -hmm. While there were closed bolt submachine guns early on, they never caught on until a really nice one was made. Right. Um, not the Rising. No, that uh, thing's yeah. uh, kind of poop. Yeah. So anyways, the, uh, the Uzi is very iconic. It's very controllable. For years and years, this was the benchmark of what an SMG should be. Even the United States Secret Service used them to protect the president they when did. Ronald Reagan was... Yeah, uh, there's that famous uh, yeah. you know, photo of the Secret Service agent uh, extending the stock from under his jacket. Right. When Ronald Reagan was shot, um, the, S or the agent opened a Samsonite briefcase and pulled out one of these. And then, of course, you've got your folding stock that deploys very easily and very quickly. But you can also fire it one-handed and very controllably. Yeah, now, the Uzi also made use of a check innovation called a telescoping bolt. And to demonstrate that, can you hold up the MP40, Patrick? I surely can. The MP40 does not have a telescoping bolt. Now, a telescoping bolt means that a certain portion of the bolt overlaps with the barrel. And if you want to show them the size difference, this is the difference between a telescoping bolt and not having a telescoping bolt. You're really putting a lot of length on the table by having a bolt that doesn't wrap around at least a portion of the barrel. Right. So this is when SMG started getting really, really compact is when the advent of the telescoping bolt came with the CZ uh, submachine guns in the late yeah. 40s, early 50s. Um, but even even this. Yeah, that's, that gun's kind of an enigma. It, it, it doesn't really, really is. have a true telescoping bolt because it doesn't no. wrap, but it does have a large portion of the bolt that ins kind of goes on top of the... Well, uh, yeah. yeah, it's kind of a... Uh, yeah. But the size difference between this and an MP40 or Thompson is... is uh, is great, um, very noticeable, and this is easy to keep on target because the cyclic rate's very low, and it uh, it's a joy to shoot. It is, and, and I, I believe that the Israelis start uh, new shooters out That's on the That's what I've always Uzi. heard as well, yeah. I've heard that. I, I don't know if that, that to be accurate. It's still true or not. It's also got a bunch of different safety features. For example, you didn't rack the bolt all the way, so it got caught nope. on the ratcheting top cover. Mm -hmm. It's also got a grip safety, like a 1911, and a, a regular manual safety. So uh, mm -hmm. it's a very safe firearm. Yeah, you can hear that ratcheting. Yeah, right you can hear the ratcheting mechanism there, which is cool. Um, you know, we do a video review on the on the Uzi if you guys ask, but there's so much video of this gun that it's... Yeah, we would, I mean, you know, I, we if, you, if you guys want to see it, I'll gladly go out and yeah. shoot it. We'll call... Uh, we'll call uh, call our friends over at Ventura Munitions yeah, and Ventura ask them for some nine. Some, hey, we need some Uzi ammo, and I'm sure Ventura would send us all kinds of Uzi ammo, so... Oh, yeah, but, uh, uh, but, you know... Check they them would, out if you're in need of ammo. Yeah, they would definitely hook us up as they uh, as they have been doing. So, that's cool. Uh, anyways, that's enough uh, lip service to the Uzi. Great gun. Sure. Common rental gun in the in ranges in the United States. It, yeah, it's just tough to kill them. Yeah, they uh, they run parts are cheap too. So if you're in the market for a sub gun, uh, parts are uh, very available. Parts kits are cheap. You can build a semi auto for very inexpensively, or you can buy a semi auto for about eight mm -hmm. nine hundred bucks. So. Um, I'm going to leave that yeah, extended. Yeah, extended. Next one is what many, myself included, consider the king of SMGs. Now, that is yes. the HK MP5. 
Um, the MP5 was truly revolutionary. Uh, it was the product of a development project known as Project 64, making last year the 50th anniversary of the MP5. Um, it sacrificed some length to have a, a non-telescope enclosed bolt that functions via roller delay blowback, which means incredible accuracy. And if there's one gun that's generally synonymous with the good guys these days in law enforcement and some, you know, military, it's this uh, person, gun right here, yeah, uh, protection yeah, details, that's the MP5. Mm -hmm. um, um, and I think it's going away in terms, you know, it's more in favor a of a carbine yeah. arrangement. But um, you know, up until about maybe five, six years ago, this was. The good guy gun. Yeah. Period. Even the, uh, even today, people say things like, "Well, I'd rather have an <coughs> SBR," and I say, "Yeah, I would generally rather have an SBR." But uh, the thing is, a suppressed two to three SBR. I mean, it's louder than this is. It's loud. It's um, very loud. Well, and, uh, we've shot not, this side by side with a suppressed twenty two, and it's been roughly the same. It's amount, about the same. You know, but with this, you can throw one hundred and fifty eight grains subsonic. Now. Subsonic 223, first of all, won't cycle your AR-15, generally. No. Um, and it's also going to be very, very it's low It's essentially, weight. you know, a 22 long it's a, rifle. It is a 22 long rifle with a better, you know, slightly better ballistics. But right. with a suppressed SMG, which is where they still kind of have some relevance. A lot of people say they're obsolete. I partially agree. But suppressed, especially a 45 SMG, they really shine. Um, now let's get on to the honorable mentions because they're two really cool guns. Um, this is actually an MK760, which is a copy of the Smith & Wesson 76, which is a copy of the Swedish K, slash, also known as the M45. The Swedes did a really good, good job designing the Swedish K submachine gun, aka the M45 Gustav, and uh, we bought a bunch of them for Vietnam. Now, when the Swedes said, we don't like you doing what you're doing in Vietnam, we're not going to sell any for you or to you, we said, okay. So Smith & Wesson designed the 76. Now they were popular because when you come out of the water, since they are open bolt and they're very well ventilated, water drains out of them in, I mean, I want to say about a second or so. It's not even, yeah, it's if that. very, very quick. I know that um, I even had a reader contact me who worked for something like the Coast Guard in New York, and he said they still use these around uh, New York City Harbor and stuff. Really? Because they're not susceptible to water. Yeah, or not as susceptible to water. Um, which is very cool. They're very good guns. They're stout and uh, well made, especially the Swedish variants. The MK 760s sometimes you run into a few issues. Smith and Wesson 76 is made a little better, but still very cool guns. Yeah, still a little bit rattly, but yeah. you know, I mean, kind of is what it is. Yeah, they they slipped a bunch of these in before the 86 cutoff. That's why you see so many MK 760s or Irvine MK 760s. Uh, so a very cool gun. Last one. The gun that made the 80s roar, that's going to be the MAC-10. Now this MAC-10 has been heavily modified. This has got a Lage slow fire upper and an ace side folder on it. But uh, in stock configuration, they're just a barrel of fun because they fire so quickly that uh, you can almost empty an entire magazine before the first shell casing hits the ground. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's almost comically fast. Yeah, and uh, an M11 uh, A1, a 380 version, is a very small gun that you can fit. Uh, you can almost concealed carry, not that I would. I would. Well, actually, for our concealed carry video, most guys said if you don't carry a full-size, full-capacity magazine gun, you're not very well protected. <laughs> well, I'd say if you don't carry a Mac-10 or Mac-11, I mean, how protected can you say you are? I don't know. Yeah. I think one uh, one of our viewers commented that he would like to carry the, the USS Nimitz, but uh, yeah. it was a little less well, manageable. Whatever. No, but of, course, of course I'm kidding, and uh, I think that's great. But uh, the Macs are great. There's also a really cool book about these called The Mac Man, about Gordon Ingram designing these and whatnot. And they're just a lot of fun to shoot. They're hard to control, and they take a learning curve to, to master. Yes, they do. Uh, with, with a slow fire upper, it's fairly you know easy. Yeah. It's easier to shoot. This was, baby's, um, this was baby's first submachine gun here, so I did everything I could to make it competitive in like subgun matches and things like that. Um, and being an open bolt gun, it's still hard to compete with the MP5 guys. But uh, I've seen guys do it. Richard Lage, who owns the company that manufactures this upper, uh, basically kicks everyone's ass with one. Yeah. So uh, keep on keeping yeah, on what you're doing. No kidding. And uh, uh, one really cool thing about that is that there are caliber, caliber conversions for them. There yeah. are uh, replacement uppers that even go so far as to make it a... Um, well, I guess it would be an assault rifle then. Yeah, they're also the cheapest. Yeah, there is a 223 upper. They also, uh, mm -hmm. They're also the cheapest SMG on the market, which is cool. So if you're interested in a first SMG or first machine gun, maybe look at a MAC-10 or 11. Um, it's, yes. easy, it's easy to say like, oh, well, it's a MAC-10. That's kind of a garbage gangster gun. But uh, um, No, I mean, I think that they're good guns for you know the, the price point that they're at on the marketplace. Uh, I think they're you know, five to $6,000 at this point. All those 80s drug runners couldn't have been wrong. 
except legally, of course. <laughs> but uh, um, anyways, guys, this is a whole table full of uh, full of fun here. We really enjoy these guns. Um, all of them are military weapons, uh, but they are uh, civilian legal, which is cool. So mm -hmm. on that, uh, I think we'll lead out of the video. We'd like to thank again Ventura Munitions for providing ammo for our upcoming videos on this stuff. Um, also, Grizzly Targets yes. sending us some AR-500 to shoot, so we'll be able to... Uh, to kind of show the knock and the ping yeah, with some it'd be, it'd be kind of nice to go ahead and shoot something other than dirt clods. Yeah, and, uh, you know, whatever we throw out there. But yes. uh, anyways, guys, we appreciate you watching TFP TV. Also, if you did that subscribe button, it would really help us out. Um, I know it would make Patrick happy. Yeah, so, always. Yeah. Anyways, uh, thanks again. If you don't again. subscribe, I'm going to reveal you $5. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. But uh, anyways, thanks, guys, and uh, we hope to see you next time.